Today is the first day of Hanukkah. Mm. And I have a dream. Really, 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 really interesting dream. We have it on the first day of Hanukkah. Okay. So it's a TVA dream. Mm. Okay. But it starts off weird because I don't have a badge. And they're in process, and a bunch of people, like they do for the outage, a bunch of people are coming in, a bunch of contractors coming in for the power outage. So they're all lined up, bunches of them, that like thousands of them. And they're trying to get processed in. <clears throat> and I'm there. And like I said, I don't have a badge, but you're there too. Hmm. And you got a helicopter. You tell you're not really there to process in. You're not there to work yet. But you tell them. You said I got a helicopter. Mm -hmm. And I said that'd be good. You could take the you could take the con you could take the uh, managers, the supervisors, the important people in the contracts. You could take them to their meetings. When they have to go to meetings at other places, you could take them to their meetings. Hmm. But I'm thinking that it's supposed to be to, to, for more important stuff. Anyway. You're waiting around for them to need your helicopter. For them to might say, hey, come on, let's go in the helicopter. While I'm over here working with the people that's processing in. I don't know if I'm working with them. It's kind of like I'm working with them because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm going through the line. I ain't hanging out in the line with them. I'm going around them and just doing it like I normally did with around the contractors, just operating around them like a manager. So they're processing in. But like I said, I don't have a badge. And at one point, I found myself in this special area. For people who don't have badges, it's like a, there's like a, like a catwalk, like a certain area that's shielded off with these blue things, blue, uh, blue rails that you can go and you don't have to worry about having a badge. So at one point I'm in there, but I don't stay in there. Another time I'm dodging people because I'm in places that I ain't supposed to be in for people who don't have a badge. But every time I see somebody looking, I'm like covering up where the badge is supposed to be, I like throw my arms up mm -hmm. and hiding the fact that I don't have a badge and going on doing whatever it is that I'm doing. And like I said, it's thousands of people that's processing in. So then I find myself in other parts of the plant. Uh, I'm looking up at the system with the pipes and all of this and I'm like thinking on how somebody has to know all of these systems and what all these pipes go to and all of this stuff and I find myself in a weird place um, that has some um, blockades on it not really caution tape or, or a sign or anything is just where they've wired some put some wire on some gates that I would have normally wanted to use and mm -hmm. so I'm sitting there a little bit confused because there's wires on these gates and I'm like why is there wires shutting these gates why is somebody wired this up and wired these gates shut so I'm looking down and seeing where they go and one of them sure enough is the um the ladder has been cut and the ladder doesn't go anywhere. It kind of just drops off. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's my that one. And so all while doing this, I hear the announcement that they're getting ready for second Passover. They have put in the newsletter or whatever it is for all, for everybody to know. This is, that was over there with the, with the, um, 
contractors at first, but now I'm working my way back over to the engineering part, mm-hmm. for the TVA part. For the TVA people, but the regular, but the regular people, and I, and the regular people have put in the announcement in the paper, in like the newsletter, or send out an email that Second Passover was coming, and that they was doing something for Second Passover. So all of a sudden, everybody starts heading towards the engineering part department to get this food. For second Passover, everybody's doing a second Passover meal that they're having as a special event over in the engineering department. And all of a sudden, I had a badge again. I looked down, and there I got a badge. My badge is on me where it's supposed to be at. But I don't pay no attention to that because I'm trying to get over there to get the Passover food too. But again, it's a long, long line. Everybody's Everybody's trying to get there. And I'm still in this weird place. I'm still in this weird part of the plant. And I don't really know how to get out of here. Mm. Because the gates are wired shut and all of this. And I'm thinking about jumping over stuff, but I don't want to do that. And then this other guy comes. Some guy that I halfway know. He comes and he tells me about second Passover. He may have been the one to inform me at all about it, how they put it in there. But he's like coming through and he tells me, oh, they're doing second Passover. But then he jumps the rails. He goes over the rails. He's, he's good. He even did this before. He jumps over the rails and goes on about his business. So then when I get ready to do something like that, somebody comes and and chastises me, you can't do that. You jump over there, you're going to mess this up. You're going to mess that up. So I got to go a long way around. So I can't jump over the rails like he did. So I'm going to go the long way around. So now I start going down, find myself in this line or that line or whatever. But because I'm in this weird place, I end up going outside while they're all trying to get to the engineering department on the inside, I'm on the outside. It's about four of us on the outside of this plant. And then we start running. I'm figuring, I guess they're figuring too, if they're on the inside walking along in lines, we're going to get ahead of them by being on the outside and running. On the outside of the plant, running all the way around. So we're going to get in the head of them. So we're running. And at first, everybody's running fast. I'm running fast. Somebody gets ahead of me, but I'm on them running fast. But then I get tired. And there's this this guy there, um, a dwarf guy, very short guy. And he has a basketball. And he's throwing a basketball around and this and that and other. And I'm still trying to run. But then it, it, re- then it dawns on me and everybody else involved that I'm running as fast as I can because I'm tired. I'm running as fast as I can. But yet here this dwarf is that's walking and he's keeping up with me. So then it's like, you know what? I might as well stop running. I might as well start walking too. So the thing is, when I stop running and start walking, my, I actually end up going a little bit faster. Because it was like I was just running and running and running, but I wasn't doing that. But then when I actually started walking, I was able to pick up a little bit more speed while walking, weirdly enough. And so I'm walking beside the dwarf and everybody else is walking. So we finally get around to the engineering department. And they're giving out food and they're talking about Passover. Everybody's doing a second Passover. And so I'm sitting there at the table with the guy who has come up with the numbers for second Passover. So they introduce him and they do all of this and they do all of that. And then they, they turn it over to him and let him talk. <clears throat> he starts explaining the dates. He's got a list in front of him. I'm looking over on this paper. And he's got all of these dates in front of him. Everybody about this point is eating. Everybody's grubbing at this point. Except him because he's talking. And he's telling them about 
their dates. He was telling them about this date. He was telling them about that date. And this going on and that going on. And then he kind of looks down in his paper, knowing what's going to happen next. He looks over at me and said, what do you think? And that's when I started to inform him that his dates are wrong. But he already knew that was coming. So I'm making him feel better by saying, you know, we all get it wrong at first. We all have to learn. But then I'm at the same time pointing out these dates because he's got um, Jubilee year has already passed. And I'm telling him some of these are very important dates that, you know, they can't just go without you know, something significant and you got them being in the past. You know. So so the first thing I told him is I think me and you gonna have to get together on these dates. And then I started explaining to him that they were wrong, but like I said, I'm trying to make him feel better. Um not feel bad because I'm like, you know, at least you guys are not trampling on a feast day because of certain things that you're doing wrong on a feast day. And at least you're not doing that. You got some time to straighten it out. And then that's when the dream begins. Mm. Wow. You have a lot going on right now. Yeah, I've been trying to remember it all. I'm going to wait for a while trying to remember it, trying not to forget it. Mm-hmm. Had a song so far, but I don't remember. But there's a lot going on in that dream. I guess my first question would be, um, and you probably don't have an answer for it. Was why was the second Passover? Oh, actually, I thought about it. Second Passover to me seemed like it's for the Gentiles. I've all, I've thought that for a while now. That it seems like Gentiles or the second Passover is for Gentiles. Kind of like where the people who are serious, the people who are on it, the people who are doing it for a while, the people reading the Bible and all of this, they go through first Passover. But then they kind of start making people aware of it. And so instead of telling them you didn't miss it all together, they start inviting them to second Passover. And so a lot of the people who are just waking up, new, never heard of Passover, don't know what to do, ain't been paying attention, they ends up in second Passover instead of first. And so that's why the whole company, this is a company-wide thing now, because they send it out in the company bulletin. Mm-hmm. The whole company was doing, the whole thousand, all thousands, of these thousands of these people working at this company is now coming to second Passover. Hmm. I guess my next thing would be really was just what was the purpose of you getting in that room and getting caught up? You know, not being able to get out and not being able to I guess the reason that you wasn't able to go across the thing like the other guys breaking the rules, but uh, what was the significance of you being caught up in that way thing? I don't know. It might have been what it was, not breaking the rules. Because I thought about stepping over it. I thought about jumping over it and going through it. Because it, in because technically, it wasn't really a rule. Like I said, it didn't have danger tape, and there was nothing posted. Which you know. But when you got ready to break the rules, someone said, "Hey, stop! You're not supposed to do that." And he said, "I would tear something up." He mm-hmm. said I would, mm-hmm. I would, I would shake something loose if I were to jump across the rail. I would knock something down or something like that. But like I got said it wasn't where I worked at. That wasn't the rule. Somebody, you know, if something need to be blocked off, they have to have, they have to be a post. There's certain things they had to do. They had to put caution tape there, or they had to put danger tape there, or they had to post something telling you what was going on and what was this and it had to be an explanation. Couldn't nobody just put some wire on something and shut something up. If somebody did that, you know that I think that would have caused just as much just confusion mm-hmm. as it caused me in that dream where I'm sitting there going, what am I supposed to do here? You know, because there wasn't nothing posted, wasn't nothing explaining nothing. And so 
I stood there trying to fix. Like I said, I couldn't go where I was wanting to go. I was like, going in the engineering department because that's where it was lit. Going no toward that way. But I wasn't, but because that gate was shut, I wasn't able to go that way. But the other guy, he just came through so quick. He came through quick. He came from one side and all. He had just enough time to tell me that they had put in the bulletin about second Passover. And he was gone. He bounced across that fence so fast. And he he was gone. Well, I guess you knowing yourself around the building was the reason that y'all moved to run to try to get to the other side. Yeah, I knew the building, man. I knew everybody else was bogged down in lines and, you know, they basically lockstep. But, yeah, I knew where I was at. And so I knew how to get around everything. Even when I was over with the contractors, I knew how to get around them. Was this a, um, was this the same building that you, you worked out of? I felt like that. It didn't look like that. But I, I didn't feel like I was in a new place at all. But, of course, it was in a dream time. So. What do you think the significance of a dwarf was? I've never heard some of you say anything about a dream or a dwarf. Yeah, he was just short. And he, and he had a basketball. And I was running. And he was ahead of me. And he was throwing the basketball over my head to somebody behind me. And mm. they would take the basketball and they would throw it back to him over mm. my head. And it was like I was, I guess, I was moving so slow that they was just running around me. I'm trying to remember that before we all started running or after we all started because at one point we just all started running. I mean, we was flat out running fast. We wasn't jogging, we was running. Do you remember anybody in that dream? I knew people in the dream. I don't remember nobody specifically. Maybe one guy. I mean, one guy. I could call out his name. Almost Clint. I can almost call out his name. So where did y'all have the dinner at? The dinner was, they gave out the dinner in the engineering department. Mm -hmm. And then everybody just went and found somewhere to sit. And um, I sat beside the guy. And this, who, was, this was a guest? Somebody they bought in to speak it? Or? Mm-mm. He was, he, he, he seemed like he was in the department too. It seemed like he was a part of it. He was in the department too. It was like something they just, I don't want to say just screw together, but I'll say like they brought nobody special in. It's just something they did, and they would have, you know, had some certain part, some guy in the engineer, some certain engineer to go figure out the dates. Because you say he looked at you. Well, we was just sitting at the table. It was four of us at the table. And he was sitting to my right, right here, and there was a person in front and a person to my left, and the other two was eating. And he was... He just had the paper in his hand, and they asked him about the dates, and he started telling them about the dates, and he was telling them the date of Passover and the date of the Jubilee and the Sabbath day year, the Sabbathical year, and he was just telling them dates after dates. And once he finished his spiel, he just asked me, "What do you think? What do you think?" And I said, "I think me and you need to talk about these dates." So you have any t- interpretation of what you think? I don't know. Like I said, for it to be on Hanukkah, it's kind of. I mean, I always, I always say we dream start happening on Hanukkah for some reason, but for it to be about second Passover, the most significant thing about it is the fact that everybody was going to second Passover, where normally you're thinking, you know, out of a thousand people. You know, four or five of them, they at the most, is the only ones thinking about biblical feast days. Mm-hmm. But here it is, it was a company-wide thing. I mean, they invited the whole company, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like it was just the engineering department. That's the department that I was going to. That's the department I felt like I was a part of. But the whole, the whole everybody would have been involved in 
It seemed like to me everybody would have been involved in it. Because they put it out in a bulletin and said the Passover. And I just like they would have a Christmas party. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of thing it was where they, you know, everybody coming to get something to eat. We having the second Passover day. Everybody coming to get something to eat. So they all start rushing back over there to get some, get some Passover food. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember it all because I think I would think I would do a formal recording on his dream. I don't know. Because it would be a TVA dream. Mm-hmm. I didn't dream as far as TVA. I didn't dream. But the first dream I had was I was getting hired in. And had me thinking I was actually going back to work there. I had so many dreams that I was interviewing with them and going to all of these interviews and stuff. That was back in, what, 2000, I want to say 2016. Mm, That's what I was going to say. 2016, I thought I was actually going to go back to work there. And then I ended up getting hired there in a dream, of course. I ended up getting hired there as an instructor. And I was a teacher in there for a while. And then um, ended up going away and not working there for a while. And then something happened. Something big happened to where they called me back in to work there again. And so... I went back in to work there. These dreams over years. At one point, they hired me as a security officer, and I had a big gun. I had a big come through there with the biggest handgun in the world. Mm-hmm. And um, so they hired me in as a security and security as the police on the place. And so I didn't probably had twenty different dreams about this company and so definitely I don't want to say a reoccurring dream but it's something like the company reoccurring and now I guess they all getting ready for Passover all getting ready for the sake of Passover hmm. so that's big Black thickens yep <sighs> So what's next? Mm-hmm.